Hi, I'm Mike Haynes with Pro Irrigation Training. I'd like to welcome you to our second course here called Electrical Basics and Irrigation Timers. And we're going to start off with some very basic definitions of electrical terms. And I hope that the information isn't too elementary for you, that maybe if you take some time and absorb this information, because I know that I've ran into a lot of irrigation technicians out in the field and landscapers, and if they knew just a little bit about electricity and knew how to properly work a multimeter, they could save themselves hours and be a whole lot more profitable and efficient out in the field. Let's start off with a good definition of electricity. Electricity is the free flow of electrons through a circuit. Now, the free flow of electrons depends on the presence of a good conductor. A conductor is a material that has an atomic structure that has free electrons, and that's favorable to electrons flowing freely through the substance. We have silver, aluminum, copper are some of the best conductors that we know of. On the opposite end of the spectrum are insulators. A good insulator would be plastic that we use to cover wires and the jacketing of different wires and insulators. So plastic is a great one, glass, dry wood, concrete. There's a number of different substances that are good insulators. And what makes them so is the absence of free electrons. They have an atomic structure that doesn't allow electrons to easily pass through. The other part of that definition is the free flow of electrons through a circuit. So a circuit has to be present for electrons to flow. There has to be a difference in one place and another. For instance, your source would have, say, 120 volts and your load would have none so that when you plug an appliance in or a tool or whatever it is, electrons flow from the place where there is electrons to the place where there isn't. So if there's no difference, there's no flow of electrons. Now a circuit is necessary, which means that there has to be a path all the way around. It, the electrons have to leave the source, go out to the load or the appliance or the electric tool or whatever it is we're dealing with. But then the electrons have to return back to the source so that there is a constant circuit. There's a constant cycle of electrons that are passing through the circuit that this is connected to. And when we talk about circuits, there are two different kinds that we can deal with. One is a series circuit, which is just one continuous loop, and every part of that circuit is a piece in this series, and if one component breaks or fails, then it opens the series circuit up and electrons can no longer flow through it. A good example of this would be Christmas lights, especially the old school kind that maybe people my age grew up using. So you'd go out and get a string of Christmas lights, and then if one single bulb goes out, then the whole cord and maybe even the entire string would no longer work. That means that that string of Christmas lights is a series circuit. Now, the strings of lights that you get these days are all in parallel. And so if one bulb goes out, then the entire string isn't inoperable. 